The Trimble RTX Correction Service coordinates are computed in ITRF 2014 Current Epic. Many data collection apps such as Teraflex or Esri's Collector don't currently support the time-dependent transformation, creating a datum shift between it and other coordinate systems. To transform this data correctly from ITRF 2014 Current Epic to another coordinate system, we will use the NGS Horizontal Time-Dependent Positioning tool. In this example, I have collected my data through Collector with a Centimeter Edition R2 and a Center Point RTX. To confirm that my data is shifted, I'm going to compare it to a control point. You can see here that it's about a foot and a half difference between my collected position and the control point. In my attribute table, I have the GPS metadata field to use by collector. These coordinates will be in ITRF 2014 Current Epic as the coordinate system the receiver is using. If you don't have these fields, you can run the Add XY tool in the Geoprocessing Toolbox to add the latitude and longitude to the attribute. So we'll search for the tool. We'll click on it to run it. And we'll just put input the feature class that I used to collect the data into and click Run. So now if I browse to the end of my attribute table, you can see that it has added the X, Y, and the Z value. You may be missing the Z value if your data isn't 3D enabled. So now what we can do is we need to format the file to output to the HTDP tool. So we only need the lat long elevation and ID field. So we can go ahead and check off all the other fields and just select the ones that we want to use. So I'm going to use the FID and then I'm going to use my X, Y, and Z points that were added with the add X, Y tool. So now I can go ahead and save. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and export out my table. So I'll select the feature class that I want and, and then put the output to a directory that I can find. And we'll go ahead and run it to export the table. Now that my table is exported, I'm going to go ahead and open it in WordPad. So you can see here I have it formatted in a certain way. So to be supported by the HTDP tool, you need to have it first with the lat positive, long positive, the elevation, and then the text description. So each of those just needs to be separated by a comma. So you do may need to do some editing depending on how your table exports. Now we're going to browse out to NGS's HTDP tool. From here, you can see there's a couple of different options. We're going to choose the fourth option down because we have an actual recorder position that we want to change the reference frame on from certain epoch. From here, we're going to go ahead and select the third option down. We have multiple points in a file and they are in a lat long height format. If you have northings, eastings, then you're going to use the next option down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our input, which is the IETRF 2014. And then I'm going to put it to a NAD83 2011 coordinate system. So after those two are selected, we need to put in the epic date for each of those. So your epic date for the ITRF 2014 is going to be dependent on when the data was collected. And then for the NAD83 2011, you're going to want to use the 2010 seven parameter datum transformation. So then you'll go ahead and select your input file. Once we hit the submit button, then it's going to give us the coordinates in the NAT83 2011 coordinate system. Now we just need to get these formatted so that we can then import it into ArcGIS Pro. So what I have done is I have copied the coordinates into one Excel sheet, and then I've used calculations to separate those out into different columns for the lat long elevation and ID. So now I can copy these separated columns. And I'm going to paste the value option only so that it doesn't do the expression. And this is going to be the final file that I import into ArcGIS Pro. And I will need to add in my negatives to my X coordinates. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And we'll need to make sure that we save it as a CSV. So now with my coordinates ready to be imported into ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to go use the collector metadata tools. So there is a recreate geometry option in there that we can then calculate off of a field to recreate the geometry and move it the about foot and a half shift and take out that datum transformation issue. So I'm going to go out to the GitHub and you can see in here there is the um, collector tools. I'm going to go ahead and download these. 
And once they're downloaded and extracted, then I'm going to add that toolbox into Pro. So I'll go to my catalog and I'll do add toolbox and then I'm going to browse out to the location of those tools that I just downloaded. And we can see that they recreate geometry tools there. So now what we need to do is I'm going to add my CSV file to my map just for easy use of access. So now that I have the CSV file in here, I'm going to join it to my existing feature class that we need to move the coordinates on. So I'm going to do an add join and I'm going to point it to the CSV file as the join table, and then I'm going to use the ID fields to match them together, and I'm going to go ahead and join. So once they're joined, I can see in my attribute table that it's added in my four new columns from my CSV file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a field calculate, and I'm going to calculate the X, Y, and Z fields on my existing data with the new ones from the CSV file. Now that I have the coordinates updated within my feature class, I can go ahead and do the recreate geometry. So I'm going to browse to my feature class and then I'm going to select the input coordinate system. So this is going to be the NAT83 2011 coordinate system as that's what we had the HTDP tool transform the data into. And so I'm going to select that for my X, Y, and my Z coordinates. And then I'm going to select X, Y, and Z values, and then I'm going to output the reference name. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Run. So now we can see that it added in a new feature class, and if we zoom in here, we can see that it's much closer to our control point than the existing data was. So if I use the measure tool, I can see that I'm within a couple of inches whereas it was about a foot and a half off before. So at this point, if your coordinate system is in something other than NAT83 2011, you can use the project tool to get the data into the coordinate system that you prefer and your data will be properly aligned.